In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Being a priest, I am afforded the privilege of being with people when they are in the hospital or have some medical setback. I recall being with one person who was learning to walk again after they had suffered a stroke. I walked into the room when a therapist was working with the man to help him take some of his very first steps again. The man was stately in size and using all of his energy and concentration to coordinate his legs to begin walking again, he seemed to struggle. The man saw that I had entered the room and he said to me, I never thought that this would happen to me. I used to run. I was in the Navy. I never thought it would be so difficult to move forward. In life, we all experience setbacks in moving forward. From the time of Christ, we as Christians are reminded through the Gospels that the word and mission of the church does not come without persecution, although at times, even for Christ, moving forward was very difficult. Today we remember Christ's triumphant em entry into Jerusalem, sitting upon a donkey. We don't hear his emotions, but we do hear him reference the beginning of his passion, his suffering, and his death. What a difficult journey forward this must have been. One must remember that Christ coming to, to Jerusalem meant that the clock began ticking. The, this joyous entry into town was the beginning of his painful departure from this world. Christ knew that scripture was being fulfilled by his entry into Jerusalem, and he knew that some of those who drew near and threw palms and their clothing down to soften the step of the donkey would soon throw slanders, spit upon his precious body. He knew that although he was soon to die, his resurrection would bring a completely different reality to the world. He knew that he would rise from the dead. He spoke of it openly to his disciples. But yet, moving forward on this day must have been so difficult. And yet, through it all, knowing what was to come upon him, that his disciples would betray him, that the people would turn against him, even the chief rulers and priests would call him a blasphemer. He was never bitter. He was never negative. He moved forward in his ministry with determination and most of all with a positive attitude. Upon entering the church today, I am sure that you saw the icon of Christ sitting upon the donkey in the narthex. We prob probably haven't really thought that much about the donkey, let alone the greatness of that simple animal. I remember reading once that true humility and greatness can be found within that donkey. The people in Jerusalem were throwing boughs of palms down and various things to make the donkey step forward much easier, much softer, somewhat like a carpet. People were cheering, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And yet through all of this, the donkey never thought that any of this was for him. He knew that it was Christ who was great and who made this animal's life a special one. The donkey knew that it, he was not deserving of any fanfare. However, he knew that he did have a special place in history, and by carrying God upon his back, he made a difficult journey for Christ just a little bit easier. Each one of us in this church has a special place in God's heart. We all have a purpose and a role that God himself has given to each and every one of us. However, none of us can do anything without bearing God on our own backs and carrying his message forward in the world, just as he carries us forward when we are ill or most of the time when we are in spiritual hunger. Carrying God's message forward like the donkey means that we must bow down to God to let him on first, and then we must let him lead us in the right direction. At no time in the history and the documentation of Christ's entry into Jerusalem was the donkey in charge of where it wanted to go. The donkey merely submitted to where Christ wanted to go. I ask each and every one of us today, how many of us have truly submitted ourselves to be led by God? 
Are we trying to steer the message of God and the love that this church has for us, our own path and our own desires, either through forgetfulness or ego or self-will? Or are we letting God gently pull the reins and lead us to a new and better place that we never envisioned? Only you can answer those questions. And most importantly, only you can help others answer that question the way God wants us to, with a positive attitude and an obedience to God. Throughout the history of the church, beginning with the apostles, the mission has been clear. Go and tell the good news to all the world. Many in the history of the church were martyred for this message. But although moving forward was difficult, look where the church is today. We too need to become evangelists, to take the good news, to tighten our shoelaces, and move forward in this difficult world in which we live. Take the message of Christ to those in the workplace and bring Christian interactions to the many times non-Christian workplace. Take the good news and the message to your family and to your friends. Take the message of forgiveness and love to everyone you encounter and enlighten those living in darkness and those deceived by the evil one. Take the history, the progress, and the growth of even this church community and put an end to those who would speak against God's church with rumors and falsehoods. Grab on to Christ. Don't take your eyes off of him and don't let go. Become proactive Christians in a world that endorses reactive behavior. Speak up with the truth of God and you will win the hearts and the souls of all those around you. Proclaim what God has done for you and what St. Athanasio's church continually does for you. And the walls that you see that border this church will not be able to contain the faithful that you will inspire. You will inspire them to follow God and to embrace orthodoxy. Today Christ enters into Jerusalem, as we remember, in order to continue the divine plan of God. However, my fellow Christians, today is our day to come together as well, to move forward our spiritual lives and this entire community forward through the difficulties in life, sharing and growing, forgiving and repenting, trusting and understanding. Think back to the donkey in today's gospel. The greatest moment of that animal's life was defined by God. Although we are much more advanced than animals, and we take pride in that, one thing is still the same. Our lives, and the greatest in our lives, are only defined by God. Christ took a very difficult journey on this day. He did it not with negativity. He did it without discouragement. He did it with the power of God and moves forward in the divine plan as we will play out throughout this entire Holy Week. We will suffer with him, but most of all, we will rise with him. And this day that Christ difficultly moved forward in the divine plan of God, he asks us, each one of us, to move forward the good news. Carry God with you. Carry God in you. Bend down and carry God upon you. Let him lead you to the path of salvation. Take the difficult steps moving forward, knowing that Christ is right behind you, and he will support you and guide you and gently lead you as you continue to spread the good news of, the, of God. You can do it. Don't ever think that you can't. But it is not easy. There is a saying that negativity is the devil's ugly cousin and discouragement is the devil's best tool. God is so beautiful. Let him encourage you to move forward, to spread the good news to all the world, to turn to those around you and say what God means to you to the faithless, to those with faith, 
to those struggling in the faith and to all the world and say what God means to you and what this church means to you. Amen. Will we consider ourselves and be able to call ourselves evangelists, positive evangelists, not negative evangelists? Only then, when we bear the cross and we bear Christ on our backs and we look out to the world and we say, this is who God is, this is who God has made me, and this is who God can make you. Come and see. It is a difficult journey for each one of us. But today, as we continue in Holy Week, we are asked to bear down, to bend down, to bow down to God, to let Him upon us, to let Him lead us, so that we too can bring everyone into the church and bring all those people the good news and the message of God. Amen.